Writers, this lesson is all about using checklists to set goals for your writing. Before you get started today watching this video, you need to make sure you have digital tools available and already pulled up on your screen. So let me just quickly tell you what those will be. You wanna make sure that the Padlet that's in our Google Classroom is opened on your screen. In Google Classroom, you can find it by just looking for Writing Padlet. It's called Restarting a Writing Life. Look at the column that's called Goals, and all the tools that you'll be needing will be there. You also can probably just use the tools that are on Google Classroom in today's post. And then finally, you want to make sure that your on-demand writing is on your screen right now. Hopefully, you were able to find this, or maybe I sent this to you. Or if you aren't able to find any of this, you just need to make sure you have some writing, digital writing on your screen, ready to go. It could be from your notebook. It could be something that you sent me in a Google Doc, which we aren't using anymore, right? We're using ongoing documents, we're using ongoing notebooks. But you need to make sure that you have some writing on your screen, digital, ready to work with. Okay, without further ado, let's get to our lesson. So checklists are pretty valuable and not just in writing. Maybe you've heard the story about Captain Sully, the famous American pilot that landed the miraculous emergency landing on the Hudson River. How did he do it? He used a checklist. No, he actually did. He used a checklist, followed the protocol for what you do when you're trying to land a plane in an emergency situation, and it worked. And he's not the only one that uses checklists in really serious situations. Architects, surgeons, engineers, and even writers like us use checklists. And the reason why we use checklists is because it's going to help us to know exactly what we are trying to do in our writing and hold us accountable for our goals and for making our writing the very best it can be. So right now, we're gonna get started by looking at the checklist from fifth grade. I like to start every year by looking at the checklist from the year before, just to make sure that we are using something that feels comfortable and familiar before pushing ourselves further into the sixth grade checklist. So I'm gonna pull that up on my screen you should pull that up on yours too. I have the palette open under goals as you can see here. I'm just gonna click it. I already opened it up so it's on my screen all ready to go. Right now, just take a second to scroll through this with me. And just take it in. Maybe you've used this before because you've been using checklists for a long time and you've been using workshop, work, you've been in workshop classrooms, great. If not, you're just going to follow along, take it in, and see if there's things that maybe you've used in your previous writing workshops or lessons. Leads, those are our beginnings, transitions, moving from one part to one paragraph to the next. As I scroll through this, you probably just want to pause this video and just look at it on your own. Just get familiar with it. Just these different categories and read the description so you can really understand exactly what we mean. Okay, now that you've taken some time to understand the checklists, checklist, it's time to now use the checklist as a way to study another writer's work. And this shouldn't just be any writer, it should be an exemplar writer. So right now, I'm going to pull up some exemplar writing on my screen. And I'm gonna have the checklist also out, maybe side by side. And as I go through, I'm going to be looking for specific things on this checklist. I'm just gonna read the beginning and see what comes to mind, but I'm making sure that I'm looking specifically for items from this checklist in this exemplar writing. Toaster, I'm hungry, my brother yelped. Got get something, get something to eat. You're so stupid, Nick. I gave him advice. 
I know, I haven't eaten breakfast yet. I guess I'll have, I'll have some toast. I guess I'll have some toast. Okay, I'm gonna pause right there already. What are they already doing well? I'm already seeing that this author is using elaboration. Right away, we hear the story start with some dialogue. Let's see what else the writer does. Maybe they're gonna do all of this. And that would be an excellent example of some strong elaboration we could aspire towards as well. Nick babbled to me as he pulled the refrigerator open and took out the bread. I was sitting in the kitchen on instant messenger on the computer. I'm hearing some description for the where they are, where, where these characters are, what she's doing. Also, I'm thinking about, are also noticing the thinking that's going on in the narrator's head. I would say that this is a really strong example right off the bat of elaboration. And just looking down a little bit further, Nick shaved two slices of the bread. So I'm hearing even more. So we have like very specific description. So now that I have looked at the one part of the mentor text or the exemplar, I'm gonna look at one part of my own writing. Notice though how I only read like a little tiny chunk and focus on one specific item from the checklist. It's just too much to look at it all at once. So I'm just gonna go from one piece across the texts to another. So now I'm going to look at my writing with elaboration in mind to see if I do this or not. I'm just gonna read a little tiny bit. We passengers looked at each other. What kind of soldier is this? Suddenly, I saw a hand reach across the aisle and grab the soldier's hand. It's okay, a woman's voice said. It's okay. Are you hearing the same kind of stuff that you heard in Toaster? Maybe you're hearing dialogue? I am. I'm also hearing very specific actions, the descriptive actions, reaching the hand across putting the slices of bread in the toaster. Let me read on a little bit more and see if I keep doing this. I could see there are two hands clasped across the middle of the aisle. The soldier quieted as the plane shook again. Now are you kind of seeing also where this is taking place? I feel like I'm doing the same kind of stuff that the exemplar is doing. So one thing that I could say that I'm doing really well is elaboration. So let me pick a different item from the checklist now. If I'm doing really well on elaboration, I shouldn't sit, spend too much more time on it. I should move to something else that I might need extra help with. So now maybe I'll read with a specific thing in mind. Hmm, how about I try some craft moves? There's a lot of different kinds of craft moves. Let's just see, I guess I can do review them. So what the characters say and do, their responses, slowing down the important parts of the story, precise details, variety of sentences. Let's see what the author of Toaster does to incorporate craft. I guess he thought I was watching, watching it. So he ran upstairs. The toast began to warm up little by little. I heard Nick coming down the stairs hustling. He made his way into the kitchen and then was taken back by the site. I kind of think that there's some nice examples here of craft moves, like for instance, precise details, help the readers picture the setting, characters and events. Yeah, I feel like the author of Toaster does such a good job with this. Everything feels really specific and clear and small enough so we can really see it come to life. Let me see if I do that in my writing. In the silence, a voice from the back of the plane called, pass these up to him. And a little baggie of bright candies went hand to hand to hand and then into the soldier's lap. Headphones arrived from someone else. Fine, it's not natural, ain't that right, said the man sitting behind us. Hmm. 
I definitely do a little bit of it, but not as much as the author of Toaster. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to just kind of mark up my writing. So maybe I'll say, since I'm doing pretty well, this was a pretty good example, as I said before, of elaboration. I'm just going to tag it right to myself and do the same thing. Or you can tag it to me. I'm just going to tag it and say, this is a nice example of elaboration because Dialogue, setting, and then down here, maybe something I could work on is exactly that, using more descriptive language. Before I write a possible goal, let me just check it on the checklist. What's it say here? What exactly will I need to have, will I have to do? I included precise details and used figurative language so the readers could picture the setting. Characters and events, I used some objects or actions as symbols to bring forth my meaning. I definitely haven't done those things yet. So I'm gonna write that down as a possible goal. And I don't wanna commit to it totally yet because I, I still have some more to read. I think that's a pretty good start. So maybe I'll use some of the language from the other from the checklist. Go back and forth. We got all my tabs open. I know it's a lot, but it's good to go back and forth. Okay, so maybe I haven't done the part where I'm using objects and symbols. I'm going to try to use objects and symbols to bring forth meaning. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Do you see how I am using a variety of tools to push myself to make my writing even better? Not only am I using a checklist, I'm also using an exemplar piece of writing to help me know exactly what things should look like. So that when I go to my own writing, I'm not doing it blind. I have a really strong example. Let's just walk through the steps together just so you know exactly what I'm hoping you'll do when you go off on your own. We started by reading an item on the checklist. And then we got to know those items. And then I went to the exemplar text or the author, and we saw what matches. I started by reading a bit of the exemplar to see what it brought up for me. And then I chose a specific lens to continue on with, for instance, elaboration. And then I now I am looking back at my own writing in my own personal draft to see how I did. Did I do it? Did I do it at all? Is it okay? And I thought a bit about like being, you know, am I totally done with this? And as you could see, I decided that I wasn't. I still need to keep working on that thing. Descriptive details, bringing it to life for your readers because I wasn't totally there, not at least in the same way the exemplar was. So now I'm gonna continue on through the list, checking other things on the list, first in the mentor, then in my own, until I finally can think of possible goals that I wanna set for myself for this writing piece. So that means that by the end of this session, you are submitting to me some goals for writing alongside your first writing assignment. I can't wait to see what you do. Remember, it's important to pull up all this tech and to have it up as you continue to work. I'll check in with you soon.